Yesterday, a new dev letter was released for PUBG, both on Xbox One, PS4, and on the PC versions of the game. Now, a lot of times you see these dev letters and they're combined, but this time they split it up for the PC version of the game and the console version. Because as we all know, the two versions of the game are really different from each other. They each have their own issues to work on and their own things to worry about. And it's a pretty good read, so if you want to read it for yourself, I'll have a link in the description below so you can check it out. But I thought I'd just go over it, give my thoughts on some of the things that they mention, and kind of drum up the discussion in the comments as well because I'd like to hear your guys' feedback. So along with the content additions that come with every single season and every patch that we have, usually something's added. For instance, when we get Season 7, Vikindi is being added and we get a new sniper, the Mosin. But I think more importantly what needs to be addressed is the stability of the game and some of the blatant and flagrant cheating that we have going on both on console and PC. But there are five main points to go over in this dev letter so I thought we'd go ahead and take a look. I'll start with the two most important in my opinion and then I'll talk about the other ones afterwards. But before we get started make sure to like the video if you end up finding it useful and subscribe to stay up to date on everything that I publish. So the five main points that they go over in this dev letter are performance, the content gap, console specific balancing, anti-cheat, and communication. And first and foremost, the most important thing, without a doubt in my mind, is performance. Without improvements to performance, you're going to lose players and you won't have a player base to worry about. They start off by saying in 2019, their goal was to solve fundamental performance issues for the console version of PUBG. Problems like rendering and low average FPS were the first priorities to tackle, and rendering especially was a problem where players were seeing Play-Doh-like unfinished buildings upon landing which would take a long time to fully render in. And that's been a problem for the longest time, but I think it's really been tackled and it's really been taken care of. At least I don't hear about any complaints about that. Obviously I play on the SSD and that makes things a lot better. If you don't play on an SSD you run into problems like this all the time or at least you used to. But you'll have to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure that this problem is a thing of the past for the most part. So they've made improvements to things like that but there's still other issues they need to work on. Things like crashing, the constant FPS issues that we have if there are a lot of players around or there's a lot going on, and hitching. Crashing is basically caused by a lack of memory, a lack of usable memory, and the bigger the game gets, the less memory there is to spare, and so adding a fifth map in Vikendi is actually going to make it a little bit more difficult. So if I'm being honest, I would expect maybe there be some problems with update 7.1. Usually we have some problems right out the gate and then they send out a hotfix to try and fix them, but hopefully they've optimized things enough to where this won't be an issue. And hopefully we don't have to see maps taken away again unless they want to take away Snock. You could just go ahead and do that. That's fine. Now like I said, hitching is another issue that's been with the game a long time, but update 7.1 should bring some fixes to two instances of hitching and they're going to work on more in the future. And last but certainly not least for performance is the frame rate. So the goal on console is a stable 30 frames per second and it's been a really tough task to get that for PUBG no matter what system you play on, no matter if you play on an SSD and you have it in performance mode. It's an ever evolving issue and something that always needs to be addressed. And you remember in the very beginning when PUBG was supposed to come out on Xbox, Brendan Green said that on Xbox One X we should have no problem hitting 60 frames per second. Well obviously we've never seen that and I don't think we're likely to ever see that at least in this generation. Maybe when we get the next consoles, uh, if PUBG gets upgraded to those, then you know maybe we can hit 60 FPS and the game would just run so much more smooth and it would be such a better experience because right now it really tanks at times and it can make it hard to play. But while they're working on that, obviously they're going to share more information as it comes along. We just have to cross our fingers and hope that they can fix the frame rate going forward. Alright, next up in those five bullet points, I want to talk about the anti-cheat because I think that's the second most important out of the five that they listed. Cheating is a huge problem on console and you might not even notice it, obviously you might not even think about it because usually cheating isn't that big of an issue. But PUBG is definitely not alone in this. There are other games on console that have a rampant cheating problem. Warzone is also suffering from cheating. It's just something that's never going to go away. As long as there's a way to cheat, somebody will want to do it and exploit the game and just ruin everyone else's time. Personally, I have never done it because I just don't see a point in it. You play a game like this for the thrill and for the challenge because PUBG is such a hard game. And really any battle royale, surviving when there's that many players in the map is a challenge and you really need to focus and you know play well and do your best and make correct decisions. But then you have people that just blatantly cheat. They win, but what's the point? Does it really make you feel better? Is it really fulfilling if you know exactly where everyone is and you just have aim hacks and <laughs> you're not really doing anything yourself? 
you might as well just be watching someone play that's good at the game. But like I said, I'll never understand the mindset of a cheater, I think they're all scumbags. We're just playing a game for fun and for entertainment, and you have to go out there and troll and just ruin it for everyone else, just so you can have some kind of advantage in a video game that honestly just does not matter. But the problem is, as soon as a game company catches up to a cheat software or some cheat hacks that they have, there's new ones coming out that beat that new system that stops them. And unfortunately for the players that want to report a cheater, it's very hard to tell if someone's actually using it because there's not a lot of evidence that we can provide. And so if PUBG just banned every single person that was reported for cheating, there wouldn't be very many players left because I know I've melted somebody from really far away and I'm like, wow, that was a really good shot. I bet that guy thinks I have aim hacks or I'm cheating or something. Or obviously I'm not. You know, if you watch the rest of my gameplay, there's no way that I'm cheating. So it's a really tough task and, you know, I feel for game companies that want to make their games fair to play and you know you want to crack down on these cheaters but without some kind of crazy system in place to catch it there's really no way to make it 100% clean but they're doing their best to implement things that will catch these cheaters and hopefully ban their accounts for good I think the only way to crack down on cheaters is to make the penalty so severe that the risk is not worth the potential reward of them getting on top of the leaderboards and pleasuring themselves as they look at it there's also been some DDoS attacks and if you're not from Familiar with that they basically attack the server so that there's so much traffic um, where it's a really terrible experience for everyone involved just basically being a terrible human being and a troll so why do people do this I really do not know just to be jerks I guess and to ruin a good time potentially for everyone else but hopefully PUBG is on to something and they can actually ban some of these cheaters and ban people that are using keyboard and mouse as well because they even mention in this post that they want to make sure that people are using controllers. So all the people that say uh, keyboard and mouse is supported on Xbox, keyboard and mouse is supported on PS4, I can play with it if I want, it's perfectly fine. No, it's not. You're wrong. PUBG makes the decision if you can play on keyboard and mouse or not. They decide if it's supported for their game and they say that they want people to be playing on controllers. You should not be using keyboard and mouse if you're doing it i would suggest stopping now just in case they catch you and you get banned and you can no longer play the game and one more thing about the ddos server attacks if you're caught doing that you could face legal action and it's a serious crime so i would just stop and next i'm going to go over console specific balancing so we know that the games on pc and console are completely different so everything they do to try and balance the weapons and balance the vehicles on console uh, might be completely separate from what they're doing on PC. And one of those things is the M249. So a lot of console players have been complaining about the M249 and I think that's because just generally overall it's harder to aim. So if you have 150 rounds in your magazine, it might be easier to take down an opponent. Where on PC you have more pinpoint accuracy, the M249 might not be as good against an M4 on PC. So in patch 7.1 they're going to be nerfing the M249 again and we get a peek at what's going to actually happen. Unfortunately, they're not taking away the extended mag like I hoped. I just wanted them to get rid of the extended mag, and if you want to cap it at 75 rounds, okay. If you just wanted to have more rounds than any other gun, I guess that's okay. But why have 150? That's completely insane, and it should not be a thing. So instead, they decided to increase the recoil by an additional 50%. We'll have to see what this actually does. If it makes that big of a difference, you know, if you have, like I said, 150 rounds to shoot at someone as they're running across a field, is it going to matter if the recoil is even that much worse? The other night, we were in a final circle near shooting range. Me and my friend both had M249s, and there was one guy left on the second place team, and he tries to run out from a car, and we just start spraying. I might have hit him with one bullet, I don't know, but it was enough to take him out, and if you have 300 potential rounds shooting at someone as they're running, you're gonna kill them. It's not gonna be a problem. So personally, I think it needs to be more than just a recoil change for the M249. Uh, what would be best, in my opinion, is that they just put it back in the crate, leave it how it was, just give us a different LMG maybe, I don't know. But the M249 is a special weapon, it needs to be treated that way, and it shouldn't be nerfed to where it's completely useless, but it also shouldn't have 150 rounds in the magazine and be a world loot spawn. Alright, next up is the PC and console content gap. So, lately we've been having about two weeks between PC release and console release, and I think that's personally okay, but there's still some stuff on PC that console has never had. A lot of people have asked for a proximity chat, and a lot of people have asked for more custom game options. Well, that's something custom game options that they're going to be working on in the future. 
They're also going to give us PUBG Labs, so it's a way to test out new features. We didn't get much of a chance to do that on console, so it'll be nice to see that the console version of the game gets about everything that the PC version has. The first thing they're going to go for is more options for custom matches. And last up is communication. Now it's definitely an important thing as well. They have increased their communication lines on Twitter. They've opened up a US PUBG Twitter account. And I think they've been just more generally active on Twitter trying to let us know what's going on, let us know where there's problems and how they're trying to fix it. And they say in the next couple months, they're gonna try and make it a more open dev philosophy to try and show us what they're working on and what problems they have. And I think personally, the more communication, the better. Proper time expectations go a long way, whether that's in video games or just in general. So if you're told that something's gonna be fixed in a month, it's much better to know that ahead of time, at least you have a light at the end of the tunnel to look forward to, so long as those promises are kept. So out of those five points, what do you guys think is the most important? Mine was performance and then anti-cheat. And I think fixing both of those goes a long way into making the game more fun. I just want it to be a fair match so that my skill can go up against their skill and decision making and whoever wins, wins. Also make sure to like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to stay up to date on everything that I publish. You can also follow me on Twitter at ytboris15. But with all that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. I'll see you later.